In section 7.2, we learn some rules associated with the natural logarithm and the natural exponential function. So e to the x and ln x. These rules come in the form of both derivative rules and antiderivative rules. Okay, so we're given both in this section. Um, this chapter in general expands our set of functions for which we have rules, and it gets into particularly things like uh, logarithms, exponential functions, inverse trig functions, okay, types of things that we haven't looked at prior to this point in the course. Um, so let's look at uh, an example of a derivative rule, and I've got a couple of um, examples with integrals, indefinite integrals. So this first one is asking for the derivative of e to the x times ln x. Um, and it's a product, so we need to use a product rule. And with all of this information in 7.2, we are combining these new rules with all the rules that we had previous to this point in the course. And that's been the story all along as we acquire these new rules, is that we're using them in combination with things that came before. So here we're using these two new derivative rules in combination with the product rule. And we could also, in other examples, use them with the chain rule or use them with the quotient rule uh, or any of the other things that we've learned about. Okay, the derivative of e to the x is itself. That's, you can't get any easier than that in terms of a, uh, remembering a derivative rule. And the derivative of the natural log of x is 1 over x. So taking those two rules in combination with the product rule gives us that derivative. Now number 41 involves a new antiderivative rule that we have that's just taking that rule for ln x and turning it around as an antiderivative rule. Um, we also have to use the substitution rule uh, in order to make this work. So if we substitute for the denominator u equals x minus 10, then du would equal dx. So this becomes 3, the indefinite integral of 1 over u du. And the rule for 1 over u du is that that becomes the natural log of the absolute value of u. And of course, we get the plus c. We have that coefficient 3 in front, so that needs to be there as well. So we've got 3, natural log of the absolute value of u plus c. And just as I mentioned in the previous video, when you're doing substitution and with an indefinite integral, you want to make sure you go back to the original variable. So that's why we end this off by saying that that's equal to 3 times the natural log of the absolute value of x minus 10 plus c. 52 over here is another indefinite integral, and this involves the other antiderivative rule or derivative rules, you know, however you want to look at it, uh, that was introduced in this section, the one for e to the x. Now, we, I said earlier in this video that e to the x is its own derivative. Well, the, anti, the family of antiderivatives of e to the x is e to the x plus c. Now, in order to evaluate that indefinite integral, we do want to use substitution as well because we have e to the negative 4t, not just e to the t. And as we do that, we, we see that we have that coefficient negative 4 that we have to account for. And eventually we get down to this negative 1 fourth du equals dt. So when we convert everything over to u, we do get that factor of negative one-fourth that we need to uh, keep there. And we also have that factor of three that we started with. And so our antiderivative looks like negative three-fourths e to the u plus c. Of course, we need to go back to the original variable because we've got an indefinite integral. So we end up with our family of antiderivatives being negative three-fourths e to the negative one, negative 4t 
plus C. I'll remind you again, the check, whenever you're doing an indefinite integral, the check on your answer is take its derivative and see if you get back to the original uh, integrand. Okay. And in this case, if we do that, uh, we would use the chain rule and it would bring us back to what we started with. Okay. This substitution rule, by the way, that we're seeing here and here and that we first were introduced to in 5.5, really is the antiderivative version or sort of the reverse of the chain rule. Okay, so whenever you're uh, checking your answer for a indefinite integral that involved the substitution rule, the chain rule is going to come into play. Uh, I hope you found this video helpful. Uh, I will see you in the next video.